I'm just gonna put this one by. Yeah. Well, hello, oh, couple time friends. How y'all doing? We are cooking up a storm. We're a little dark because we turned the lights off. That happens, mm -hmm. doesn't it? I turned the lights off because I couldn't get the battery to turn in the remote to turn the fan off. So we're gonna film for just a second in the dark. Yeah. Mama don't normally can beans on Sunday, but we had a little bit of the old ox was in the ditch. She was gonna can them last night. They gotta be canned yesterday, she said. Wow. They've gotta be canned today. But it was storming and the lights was going off and on and you don't wanna start a cannon with those circumstances. So we're not having church at our church today. We did have something, we did have Sunday school. But um, we've got some cases of COVID going on, and we just didn't think it was wise to gather up today. So Mama did put these on this morning. Uh, she said, I don't want people to think I do this all the time. I said, Mama, they won't. But if it had been, she started them last night. She got the cannon right and all that, but the electricity went off twice. You don't want a cannon with the electricity. Not for your paint. So Mama's finished. They're selling. Mama says, you better hurry. So I'm gonna let you watch her uh, do the parade of beans. What? Yeah. She takes them out very carefully with the pot holder and her this little is, bean grabber. This is what they look like. And I'm gonna set them over here so I don't have to be moved again. I'll show y'all her little. Oh, you're thin on your wild thing. Why sure, Mama. She's putting them over on the kitchen table. Do y'all put yours on the kitchen table? That's where we put ours. I usually put them over here, but we're kind of busy, so. Mama, I always sit them on the kitchen table. You eventually get them Well, I set them over here when they're uh, first got out. Then I, I call this the parade of beans. I said, Mama, why don't you put them on a cheap pan? She said, no, I don't got to take each one of them. They're too make, hot. They'll make sure over. they're perfectly... If you flipped one over, you'd be scalded. <laughs> That's the bean parade. Now, the reason you turn the fan off is that cold air could crack that jar. Just that little bit of wind blowing. So you got to be really careful when you're doing uh, canning and you got that boiling water in those beans. Uh, one thing you don't ever want to do, even if it's just one little bit of pressure, you don't want to ever unseal your canner quicker. You want to let it do its course. Uh, <laughs> Mama loves to can. She loves to know that, ooh, did you hear that magic click? That's two that's clicked. My job as a kid was always to count the clicks. Count them clicks and see how many you got. Now, I know Mama probably wasn't making that my own, you know, she wasn't just leaving it up to me. She was counting too, but that gave me something to do, to sit and listen to the click. Three. And so I guess it's instilled in me, and I still count the clicks. Um, and I think Mama does too, because she said, was that two or three? Was that four? I said, yes, Mama, it was. So if you're an old canner from way back, you know exactly what we're talking about. You count your clicks, people. Count them clicks, see what's going on. Because that means they sealed. Now they can come unsealed. So it's a possibility you still ain't out of the woods, as they say. Uh, but anyway, Mama's getting her beans carried over. That is uh, why you leave them set 24 hours. Don't touch them. Under no circumstances do you touch them beans. Let's turn the lights back on. <laughs> and let there be light. She's through with the parade. Let's uh, make a little bit of coleslaw. Y'all never seen me make coleslaw. I know y'all have seen me make coleslaw a thousand times, but you've never seen me make this kind of coleslaw uh, quite this way because this is not the norm that we how we make our coleslaw. So I was at the store uh, the other day and they had a special going on coleslaw. Now I don't use coleslaw for coleslaw. Uh, most of the time, coleslaw mix for coleslaw. I use this for stir fries. I use this instead of grating up coleslaw and all that, and I have it ready to go. So I don't normally use it for coleslaw. I use it for stir fry, and I cook it in this bag. It's got your carrots. If you're gonna make uh, egg rolls, I love to make um, 
the deconstructed egg rolls or whatever, where you put your meat, you put your whatever you want to use. And then you put this in it and you don't have the egg roll bread, but you have that wonderful flavor inside. So I'm going to run this. It's coarse chopped. This is coarse chopped. Um, I'm going to run this through the old chopper and make us some coleslaw. And it may be too much. I may not use it all because these bags are full. And Mom and I don't like leftover coleslaw the best in the world. So we probably won't use all this. It's looking a little darker. I may have to pick through it. It's a good coleslaw brand, but maybe that's the reason why I won't figure out a good day, Donald. Let's pour this in here. And I'll see what we have. We won't have to worry about having um, carrot slaw today or any of that. I'm using half the bag. Half that bag. And let's see what we have. So if you buy the coleslaw mix, you think it's too coarse, or I don't care for it. I'm showing you right now, you can chop it down and make it your own. We like, we like it finer. We like it about like that right there. Mama, this is looking dark. Is that normal? Give it a taste. If it tastes too strong, we don't want it. Tastes good. It just looks darker to me. Sometimes I'm finicky. Sometimes I look at it and say, eh. But maybe it's just where this, it's been sitting there. It has been in there about six days. Ooh. Should have fixed it quicker. All right, Mom. Um, I will give us a bowl. Now, am I making cornbread too? Yeah, I'm getting my skillet hot. I got chores to do, folks. Lots of chores. Let me get us a bell for our slow, and I'll get uh, my cornbread stuff. Now, y'all know, if we're having green beans, canned green beans, we're also having what? You got it, fresh green beans and potatoes. So that's a part of our meal today. I apologize for not having this ready while I go, but I've got to get it ready now. Let me get us a plate to eat off from. I'm killing two of your birds with one stone here. Killing two or three birds with one stone. You're probably looking at the door or something. Right. You're going to have to go over and sing and dance, Mama. <laughs> Come on, Mama. <laughs> Check it up. Let's get things moving. Here you go. There's that. Thank you. Sometimes, even when you think you know what <laughs> you're going to be doing, you I don't get everything ready. I've got your flour and your meal. Thank you, Mom. Getting stuff ready for you. Getting busy while I want this other stuff. So let's put, let's come right down here. Let's put a little bit of red wine vinegar in this here bowl. Let's get our sugar, and I'm going to put a little sugar for this coleslaw. And that's about two teaspoons. This is about the equivalent of a half a teaspoon. And we're not making a whole lot. So let's get us a... Stir this up. So we want to get this till it's what do you call it? Dissolved. Just like that. I think I'm going to cook the rest of that cabbage if we're going to save it because now that I've opened it, it ain't going to last. I love the shredded cabbages I already made up because you can use them with uh, some smoked sausage. You can make egg rolls. I mean, you can do all kinds of good stuff with those packs. But I use this by one at a time because that's a plenty for us. And this time about two. And just didn't need to really. We use the rest. 
I'm gonna have to go to those big stores. The Walmart, the Food City, somewhere. Our little um, save a lot don't carry Dukes. I wish they did. Wish they did, because it would be easier than trying to track it down. But it makes you appreciate it. That's really the only difference in the coleslaw today, is I've used the pre-packed stuff. Normally I don't, I've never showed, I've never done that on camera, because I don't think I've done it but one or two other times in my whole life. But we're just making a little batch here. And that turned out just right. But all the ingredients are there. Sean, you've made a mess, is what you've made. So that's the coleslaw today. And I'm just gonna leave it in this bowl. It's too big, it's gawky, but it's just me and Mama today. Mama, do you care if I use a big old gawky bowl for the no, coleslaw? Mama's me. approved. Mama's approved. This is done, this is done. Now I'm gonna make some cornbread. Those are my chores today. Those are my chores. Um, Mama usually gives me a good chore or two to do. And I do it, right, Mama? That's right. I'm trying to get you cooking here. Oh, learn me how to cook. Get you a bowl. Let me get a bowl. Mama, I'm thinking this is our last to make it. What's this bowl for? I got one for cornbread here. To mix it in? Yeah, this white one. Oh, okay. I've got a cup of meal in it already. We'll do it your way, Mama, today. All right, let me get us a tomato, tomato platter and an onion platter. Use it all I want. Because I do want onions with that roast. Mama didn't know what she was having yesterday, or she said she did. Did you have this plan the whole time, Mom? Well, I had oh, a roast and chicken and some brown cut, so I didn't know if I wanted roast, meatloaf, or fried chicken. <laughs> so you settled on? A good old roast. Good old roast. And then what's left, we might make you some soup. <sighs> Are you just teasing with me? Yeah, I like teasing. <laughs> That's a cup of milk. And if I'm a good boy, someday I may get that lemonade. Oh, well, I don't want I'm going to put a little bit more milk. Okay. You, you stingy with your meal sometimes. I just got to tell you. That's all that was in my can. Did you put flour? No. That was all the milk that was in my can. I put a cup and a half of milk and a good half a cup of flour. That'll make that cornbread rise up. We used to call this fancy cornbread. Um... Mom, would you drop the set out of your ring? I dropped something out of it. We used to call this fancy cornbread, and the reason we did is Mama likes flat cornbread. She wants just crunch and crunch, touch and crunch. And so to distinguish the two, see I have to reach out this camera when I'm not sitting there. So instead of just to distinguish the two, if we put flour in it, it rises up and makes more middle. So we call that fancy cornbread because she always put flour in it when she took it to the church social or took it to somebody's house. But when we had it, it was just plain cornmeal. And uh, so we would say, Mama, make some fancy cornbread. And then we had greasy cornbread. And that's where you put bacon grease in it. And that was what Daddy liked. Was well, I don't want to dirty this though. Uh, we it's had good. it was hard. I don't know about now. Set it out all day. No judgment. Did you hear? I don't know about now. You played around half the day. So I hear the words that she don't say in front of y'all. Cause I know my mama. Stick it back. Miss Patience. A second while you're doing that. Um. Daddy liked it greasy. I don't care for it that well to make it that often. It's akin, when you put bacon grease in, it's akin to 
crackling cornbread. Now, we've never made crackling cornbread for y'all. We make it occasionally. But it's not Mama's favorite. And um, I like it. But you have to find crackling. Crackling. Uh, and we don't have them here. We have to go and find them. And a lot of times when I'm out at the big store, I'm not thinking, boy, you better pick you up some cracklings. I used to for you corn. We used to have our own. We used to have our own. But the bacon grease in it will give you some semblance of the same flavor. And now I'm just adding buttermilk. I don't know how much because you just do it by sight and feel. You want it to be, that's a little bit too thick. You want it to be thin enough to pour. I put probably a cup and a half of buttermilk in here. Probably a cup and a half. I can tell already this is enough. I can tell by the feel that I've got the right amount of, of liquid in there. Are you ready, Freddie? I'm ready, Mama. Finally, he's got. Finally, he's got ready. She says, "Mama, I have a lot to do. Do you realize I make coleslaw and cornbread that length of time?" Ooh, you're fine. Ooh, she's bragging on me. Can we get here together? Mm. Now that's getting hot, and this is good and mixed. Here we go. I'm gonna do this upside down and backwards for y'all. It, it didn't get too hot, did it, Mama? No. That should have sizzled. It's okay that it didn't. Uh, it won't affect much, except it won't be as hardly as crunchy brown on the outside. Now, see, this is going to cause a big old thick cornbread with a lot of center in it. Mama would prefer if she was just making it for a quick eating a meal. She'd prefer it to be crisp to crisp almost. No, not hardly that. She likes her dressing the same way. She likes um, um, she likes her dressing, cornbread dressing thin. Most of the time we have to make her own little platter because nobody don't want to eat with her much. So I like that big old thick grits. Don't they mama? I washed this, but it got cornmeal on it. Now look, there's a bad spot. Uh, what we'll get into with that, but we'll sniff it out, literally. Mama, I'm just gonna cut this up. You want it peeled? No, you don't have to peel it, but cut deep so you'll cut that out. I'm gonna peel a little bit, cause you know, the later in the season it gets, the tougher the hulls get. This is our last tomato. I don't even know where he come from. There's a few more little ones over there. It's not our very last one. I might get another tomato sandwich before the season ends, but this is, we're getting close. Um, may be able to buy some more at the farmer's market. We didn't go yesterday. Um, this peels Cold pretty thick. We ain't going nowhere. Um, this peels pretty thick. They get thick. Um, your fresh first ones usually are thin. This one, I can tell. Let's check this spot out now. We may lose a little bit of tomato because it's a pretty good sized spot. Come over to where you don't see the spot. Cut deep, as Mama says. Try to get that out of there. You can look in there and see. There's still some there. I know some of you are like, we know how to cut a rotten spot out of tomato, John. But, you know, some people don't. Some people see a rotten spot and they throw the whole thing away. Still a little bit and I can smell a little bit. You can smell it folks, that's what my mama, right there it is. It's what my mama taught me. You smell that tomato, it'll smell good or it'll smell bad. When you smell it, that's the real test. Did I get it all? Well, vision will fool you. Smell don't. I got it now. 
I got it now. This is not going to be big old pretty slices like you see on TV. And I didn't peel all of it. I just peeled some of that that was wrinkly looking. It's felt a little thick. I'm going to peel a little bit more. This is our last big one I see on the tray over there. Oh, yeah. Um, but now I may run across some at a farmer's market or a roadside stand. Um, as all things in the vegetable arena, um, you start lowering your standards. <laughs> you know, when they're plentiful, you pick out them big, ripe, red ones that are so pretty and no spots. Well, as September wears on, you might pick one that's a little less than bright red. You might pick one that's got a spot or two. Uh, because they're getting less and less. Um, so some folks will have them. There is tomatoes that they call cannon tomatoes. Um, and you can pick them. And they usually have a few bug bites, a few little spots on them. Not pretty enough to make the cut with the, you know, the stores. And a lot of the farmers will sell those for cannon tomatoes. So now, usually you'll see those bright red rings of tomatoes and they look so perfect. Not so bad. Um, I didn't get to do fried red tomatoes with y'all. I hope I can find a few more. Here you go. Well, Mama, look at you. Look at that. Now, that's my favorite. That is a delicious sweet onion. Whether it's a Vidalia or not, it's still a delicious sweet onion. Um... But um, I'm going to try to find some more and do some, some um, fried red tomatoes. And I know we've done those in the years past. And what you doing, Mom? Trying. My leg is just about. Do you need me to help you? No, it just slid in my hand. Now I just rolled up a little paper towel a uh, napkin there. Just to go catch my juice, keep it off my onion. Not that it would contaminate it or be horrible. I just don't want it on there. That's the only thing. I just don't want it. So I'm just going to slice this up. I normally use cutting board. But I can get the cutting board out for a few slices of onion. Or maybe a slice or two of... I'm going to bring my roast over here and show them what I... Not crazy. Mama, you want a thin, 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 thin slice? Yeah. You can cut it thin, 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 thin. I can, Mama. I can see that knife through that cut. Mama likes it thin enough to see through. It's not what it hurts right here. Um, I don't know if it matters about upsetting her stomach or not, if it's thin or not, but she still likes it that way. Do y'all like thick or thin tomato or onion? I tend to think of my onion as being a big old thick slice of onion when I talk about it. But I'll eat either one. If I'm having onion like on a bologna sandwich, a thin slice is good. But if I'm eating it on my plate, I even quarter them sometimes and just have a big old quarter of, of it. Onions are like tomatoes. Their season's about past for this. So, they're getting more and more precious. So, you know, people throw away a whole lot less of them when they get down. We never have been big to waste, but we put everything back in the refrigerator. But now some people, when they were plentiful, they would, you know, just use what they use and throw the rest away. But, uh, this is Mama's over here, patience. I thought you had the camera. Why, Mama, you know better. And falling out, there is an onion I cooked. That's cooked onion. Now, I'll eat that. I'll eat that with my roast. I don't care one bit. Mama doesn't care for that after it's cooked. Do you, Mama? No, not really. Not really, she said. She always drains it out. She don't want it in there. Right. I'll add on the plate for you. Yeah, for you. She said, you hear? 
I'll put that over there for you. So that's the drained out onion that was cooked in it all morning. There's some more in here. But... That'll be a plenty, as they say. Now look at this beautiful au jus. The, when they say au jus, this is what they're meaning. The, the drippings. Um, fancy way of saying it, the au jus. Here in the south, we call it the drippings. Or, a lot of people call that pot liquor. Meaning, you're, that's what's left in the pot. And people love that pot liquor. I brown my roast on all sides in an iron skillet with a little bit of oil. And that's how I get the brown, brown gravy. And Seriously. I, I get it done brown. And then I put a little coffee and salt and pepper and the onion in there and cook it. She puts about 16 ounces of coffee, a cup of coffee, and uh, that keeps it good and tender, gives it, I, I think gives it a wonderful flavor. No, it don't make it taste like coffee. It just makes it taste rich and delicious. Are you coming back with that? That's true. Oh, looky here. Let's do a fly over. This deserves a fly over. I got a few red ones there. This is some red potatoes that Mama grew and some um, I, um, regular Irish potatoes. And this is fresh green beans. Meaning, when you hear somebody say fresh green beans, it don't mean the canned ones that she canned last year aren't fresh and good to eat. It just means these have never been canned. These were green off the vine this morning. And then she's cooked them all two or three hours here with these potatoes, and that's what we're having. But now don't think for one iota that we're not having mashed potatoes too. My mama is not gonna to substitute a cooked potato for a mashed potato. Mm -mm. Now she's gonna have both, aren't you, mama? The whole meal, this whole meal, I wasn't a part of the plan, but I guarantee you it started out with a mashed potato. And she built from there. I was gonna have a mashed potato no matter which way I went. Meat loves chicken or roast. Meat loves chicken or roast, she said. I started with the mashed potato. Um, so my mama loves her mashed potatoes. And it's a vegetable. Yes. Oh wow. I'm gonna have to cook this cabbage uh, to save it. If I'm gonna and I'll cook it, put it in a dish in there. So have it ready to go. Now, Mama, I'm going to rearrange because you've put your you've put your beans where you see it. Mama's fixing it as if we weren't filming. No, I was just had it in my hand and had to get it in my hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move that over there. I'm going to move that meat over there. Don't get too happy. I'm bringing you these potatoes. That's been my chore since I was a youngin. These are uh, Yukon Golds mostly, I think. Yeah, I can see it right now. That's what I raised, so that's what we're doing. These are home-raised Yukon Golds. We're going to give them to the guy. Now, I mean, it's just me. Some of y'all are going to say, I don't like them as well mashed as I do just butter and maybe a little sour cream on them like a baked potato. They're absolutely delicious that way. But now we are going to mash them because that's what we got. And we can go buy more because taters are high. If you looked at the price of taters, they're high. And um, see, she leaves a little water in there. The Yukon goes are delicious and I'm not complaining a bit. Mama knows that. She don't like them as well either mashed. Um... But I love them with sour cream and all that on them, like a baked potato. Can't beat that. I have not enough soft butter to put in there, so you'll have to use this. I'll use that. I don't care. Uh, it's good hot. I'm going to put about a tablespoon, two tablespoons. We'll try two tablespoons today. I'll leave that out. So that batter will get hot in a hurry in the end of these mashed potatoes. 
You don't take it long to soften. If you're needing softened butter for your lunch and you forgot to set it out, take a glass and put really hot water in it and put some microwave safe glass in the microwave and uh, then put it over top of your butter and it will soften very, very quickly and be delicious. Or if you're impatient like we are, throw it in the microwave for, I put it in there for 10 seconds at a time until I get it as soft as desired. Those potatoes look like I put a stick of butter in them. No, they're, they're yellow. They're yellow. Did you salt and pepper these, Mama? I salted them when I cooked them, but I didn't have pepper them. Ooh, they're hot. Mm -hmm. Let me put a crank crank salt in. I'm just going to use regular pepper because sometimes that cracked pepper. <laughs> Mama gets chopped. That's about almost a half a can of evaporated milk going in there. Here's your peach tea. Oh, did y'all get your peach tea yesterday before it sold out from y'all? Somebody waited too late to do it. I don't want to mention no names. <laughs> but what did someone do last time, Mama? You ordered extra last time. He did. And what did mom, their mama say to them last time? You've ordered more peach tea than we'll use in a year. But I'm afraid we might use it before we can get some more. It'll be back Black Friday, Mama. We'll just ration it out. We've got another... We've got 20 gallons at least to do us till Black Friday. Is it 20 weeks or nothing? No, Mama, it's not. Now, I've got these about where I want to eat them. About the consistency of where I want to eat <laughs> That's clean. <laughs> I've cleaned it off already. So I'm going to put a little bit more because in five minutes they're going to stiffen up. And I... <laughs> you know, I'm going to take this stuff away from you. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm going to set that to the side there. I hate when I get down in these. These little silicone mats, I like them. They're very resilient, but they got that honeycomb pattern. And if you spill something in them like that, you, there, you're you right? obligated to it. You gotta scrub it, clean it. And now it'll have to wash. And then when you do wash them, they, they have water. Now they're sticky. The time we put them on our plate, they're going to be perfect. I can't stand stuff on the outside of it. Hot. I like this masher. It's my favorite masher. You're going to take it. Yeah. She don't trust me to wear that. Uh... I've embarrassed just in front of all my friends throwing mashed potatoes all over the place. See, these are already firm enough. That's what you want to serve. How many mashed potatoes does it take? Well, allow an extra one for spillage. <laughs> These taters for I spill the whole pot. Here, give them around. 
Come on. Mess. All right, let's do this meat. Let's do this meat up right. Let's get rid of this glob of mashed potato here. Mama, you're, you're cleaning up before I even get dirty. Now I'll bring you got dirty first that time. So I cut onion with this, but it's still clean. So I'm gonna find the grain of the meat, which is this way. I'm gonna cut across the grain. This pot roast is so good. I smell it. I've smelled it all morning. I'm kinda, I have too. I'm kind of hungry, you know. Well, we didn't eat what we had coming to us yesterday, Mama. No, we didn't. In no. fact, we didn't eat anything after we ate that late brunch. We ate yesterday evening about 6.30 or 7. We had a cauliflower in there, and I cleaned it up and cut it off and made some y'all's ranch. And we sat here and ate cauliflower and ranch about six o'clock. And we didn't eat very much of it. And I got in bed last night and I said, we didn't eat anything else. I don't think we ate all we had come to us. But I got up this morning early and I made mama's um, one of her go-to breakfasts, uh, which is fried bologna, and I made some more gravy. We don't normally have gravy that often, but it just called for it with fried bologna. And uh, made some more gravy. In fact, we had some of that left over, so I just made a small amount, then added that together. And we like it on light bread with fried bologna. Now, not gravy and biscuits. So we had a slice of light bread, not toasted, just bread and uh, poured that delicious gravy over and had some delicious fried bologna. Was good, wasn't it, Mama? Yeah. That's one of your favorite breakfasts, ain't it? Yeah, not too often. Sausage and biscuits and fried bologna, and she'll eat an egg if I'm here. If I'm here, she'll eat a, an egg if I fix it. You know, if I fix this egg, she'll eat. If it's just her, she ain't gonna fix it. I think you cut enough meat for us to eat for two days. Is this all you want us to have? Yeah. Mama's ration, that's, that's all you get. It won't dry out as bad. Yeah. Mama says, that's all you get right there. Okay, Mama, if you don't want me to cut no more. She's straight. <laughs> Come on, Mama, go over here and let's eat. I gotta take the cornbread out. Oh, you want me to get it? Yeah. It's going to be hot. I know, I've got pot holders. She says, I know how to cook. I've got pot holders. We can go on. All right, there's our roast. A couple of pieces left. This counter is definitely clean. It's been wiped 12 times this morning. It was wiped before breakfast, once during breakfast, and after breakfast, then before we started today. So it's good and clean. Make no doubt about it. Okay, here's the tail. We're going to toss it. Here comes the flip. We all know I was going to get blamed for that either way. Uh -huh. Do you care to grab a serving spoon for this law law? We got some slaw. Everything got it. No. Tomatoes, and tomatoes and onions still needs a little action. And the cornbread. I need a knife. And the corn. I need to cut him, don't I? I'll cut that thing. Oh, Mama. I said I would. You want my knife that I've used for everything else? I, uh, think I'm I saw going to the same old spot. <laughs> Mama, you look like foul today. You said it this morning. My ears got a Oh, when I went out this morning to take Magaloo here, uh, good feeling out there. Now it's up to 73 now, so it may have changed since uh, 5 o'clock this morning. Get your piece off and 5 o'clock this morning. 
since five o'clock this morning. Mama, you cooked that hot. I reckon. My daddy was a little bit sarcastic sometimes, and that's how I get it. But like, if you burnt your mouth on something, when like on that cornbread, if you burnt your mouth on it, he would say something like, must be where they put it in the oven, you reckon? <laughs> mm -hmm. Probably. You say, ooh, that burnt me. Maybe it's where they put it in that hot oven, you think? And that's exactly something I would say. Yeah. And it, Mama. Oh yeah. Mama, I'm gonna give you some of this middle meat here. Oh. That's your gravy. And I'm gonna take some of this tougher on the end. Oh, you think it's tougher? Are you tricking me? No, I know that's tougher. It's it's on the end where it's not tender meat. Oh my, these are fresh green beans. These were as green as gourd this morning, fresh out of the garden. And now. Lots of meditators for me. I don't want potatoes. I've got mashed potatoes. I'm picky. No, nah, Mama. <laughs> I would never call you picky. No. She picky. You can eat both, can't you? Eat both. You can eat a. a, a do you just put them on there for me then? Yeah. Because I've been wanting mashed potatoes. Did somebody want to tell you you couldn't have both? No, but my belly will. I'm going to put that in the middle. Okay. Because it needs to be next door to you meat. I'm going to put some gravy over it. It needs to be next door to you meat because your gravy going to be on both of them. Okay. I don't like to put my food where gravy and non-gravy. I want them all in the same neighborhood. Okay. Now, Mama, the big question here is, you want coleslaw? Just a little. Thank you. And do you want your onion? Yes. And a slice of tomato. Mm-hmm. Here's your, I'm going to hear what you can read through. I can read through it, that's the way I like it. And here's your tomato. There you go, thank you. Thank you, come on. Oh, I've got a plate full of food now. That's what happens when you cook a good Sunday lunch. Look at this onion. I'm getting plenty of that, because I like it. I won't be eating no more. Now, if I ain't mistaken, I got everything coming to me. Are there any, no, I don't either, I ain't got no gravy. Uh, are there any deviled eggs in the refrigerator? No, I didn't fix them. I thought we had enough. Well, I know, but we've eaten plenty of times in the deviled eggs. I was thinking about fixing them. But and the devil eggs sitting there laughing at us the whole time. My daddy would say, <laughs> have we got everything we got coming to us? <laughs> now, folks, this is Southern. This is fresh green beans out of the garden yesterday. Those are potatoes out of the garden. That's tomatoes out of the garden. There is coleslaw out of the grocery store. <laughs> I missed a beat on that, didn't I? And look at that beautiful pot roast. The day of onion out of somebody's garden. Oh, and beautiful cornbread. Y'all don't see much cornbread in this household anymore. So when we get a little taste of it, we're glad to get it. I reckon so. Let's bless this beautiful meal, Mama. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful meal. We thank you for the precious hands that prepared it, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just ask you to nourish our bodies with it, dear Lord, and protect us from anything, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we just pray for all those people out there with needs and hurts. And uh, where there's tears, dear Lord, we pray you'll dry them. And where there's loss, dear Lord, we pray you'll heal them. And dear Lord, we just pray for our country, pray for our whole world, dear Lord, as this world seems to be getting smaller and smaller as we grow. And dear Lord, we just pray that you'll always be with us. Watch over, lead, guide, and direct us. In your name we pray. Amen. I need a little bit of salt in my tomato. Yes, ma'am. There you go. Do you want pepper? No. Did you put pepper in the potatoes? I sure did. Uh -huh. And I even put a scant. I don't need, a, need no pepper. I even put a scant of um, pepper. 
or the sound in your text. Even though I know you said you did, but let's try that beautiful power rest. Mmm. Mmm, mom. So did this come to you in the middle of the night or was it what we was talking about last night? Or? All this I have planned either. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
I, I'm not going to rush until I have to. They may come up and pop up and say, oh, there's some more. <laughs> Terry and them like you, Mama. They might send you some. If they ain't got it, they can't. No. That's true. But here's the thing. We've got some. We're thankful for it. Yeah. And uh, they're coming out with a raspberry before then. Oh, I love There it. you go, Mama. I just solved the problem. We'll get some raspberry between before then. It'll come out the end of this month. So, get on the file. I'll do it, Lord. I don't want to listen to this no more. <laughs> Make me good show You'll hear the alarms wherever you live, and you'll say, What was that noise? <laughs> it's 8 o'clock one morning, and you'll say, Oh, that must be John's, y'all's sweet tea alarms. Because Mama will not have it if he do not get that raspberry. Mm -hmm. They may send us some ahead of time to, to open, Mama. Like they did the cat. I guess I've got my fingers crossed. <laughs> Boys, if you're listening, help me out. It'll be good. I ain't no hope for us. Really. I can't wait for the raspberry. It's just you like raspberry bear and peach. Yeah. Flavor, anyway. Raspberry is your number one flavor. I know it. I hope it's as good as this peach. What if it's better? Good by peach. <laughs> Mama, I love the peach. Mm -hmm. I may like peach better than raspberry. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I can see it now. The y'all sweet tea war at the Davis house. Make peach or raspberry. Exactly. Which will it be? I can't wait to try the, the raspberry. Mm -hmm. She's no one over here. I don't know what's wrong with that little princess today. There's no storm. So it was last night though. So... It thundered, it lightened, it carried on like it's went off and on. So today, she won't get in her bed. Where that's where she's laying on the hardwood floor, mm -hmm. asleep. At our feet. So we both about tripped over today. And she's laying around like throw rugs all over the house. So if you move her from under your feet, She'll go right over there and lay down, and you look up, and there's mine. You laid out like a gray throw rug on the hardwood. I took her to her bed. I put treats in her bed. She eats the treats. She got up, come back in here. She don't want to be anywhere but where we are today. Maybe she knows it's going to storm again. She could, Mama. But now she's clingy, clingy to that. I don't take the hiccups. I bumped her earlier. I turned around to get up, and there was Maggie. Mama about stepped on her after breakfast because she's right under Mama's feet. I put my foot down off the stove to get up and I put it on top of her. She squealed a little bit too. But you getting up? And I was like, are you okay? I about stepped on Maggie. I about put my weight because I was standing up. I caught But she's right there now. I see her now. She right by Mama's bed. Right by Mama's foot. Somebody said the other day, yesterday I think, why don't you talk about your dog you won't share her with us? She's antisocial for one thing. She's raised her head up now. Can y'all see her? There's Maggie. How do you share a dog that won't let you pick her up, won't let you touch her? Oh, you can pet her, but in the floor, all four feet on the floor. Don't pick her up. Don't pick her up. She don't bite her like that, but she just don't like it. And she things. don't. And she'll just, she tenses up. She hates it. And um, she won't even like rear up on the chair or nothing if you're sitting there for you to pay. You have to go to her. Basically, all four of her feet's going to be on the floor at all times. She's going to be in full control. I think that's one reason she don't like to ride anymore. Because she, 
used to she could jump in the vehicle. Now you have to pick her up and put her in there. And I think that's part of the trigger of, I don't want to ride. She sleeps more and she stays awake. Mm-hmm. She sounds sleep She's already. Like me. Oh. She's snoring. Already snoring. Mom, you got anything you want to add? No. Beautiful, I'll... beautiful meal. Well, thank you. We, I've overate already. I've shoveled it in too fast. <laughs> I was hungry. Well, you didn't eat what she had come to you yesterday. I know it. But I'll eat some more once that rest is sick. <laughs> She's resting to eat some more. Uh-huh. Shake it down. You're going to go for a ride today. I don't know. People have fences up and fire pots out and flags up. And, and next week, well, you won't know nothing. It'll be all new to me. You'll be sitting here thinking, I, I, didn't have know, I didn't know that she had already decorated for fall. They're smarter than me. I tell her, the neighbors only put that stuff up for you to look at. I know it. Some of them do such beautiful jobs. They do. They really, they do. Um, our neighbor up across the road from us, she always has beautiful flags out and stuff. Beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. I see more one had some beautiful wreaths for sale. Very cheap. Oh, Mama, are you wanting to go buy a wreath? Where would you put it, Mama? You don't do wreaths on the door anymore. I do after the snakes go in. <laughs> you do Christmas. I do late fall Christmas and early of the year put out something. But when snakes come out, I quit putting them. Hmm. I went down to the garden and I've not seen Mr. Longfellow in several times. There are no signs of him. You would think it would be impossible to miss my mouth with this fork. Oh, it's easy done. I do it all the time. <laughs> You're enjoying those potatoes, aren't you? I love them. Just potatoes cooked on beans. Hi, right, Mama. If you ain't no sing or dance. Oh, my belly's too full to sing and dance right now. And I can't carry a tune. You can carry a tune. Can't carry rhythm. I do the rhythm with the thing. We're going to go then. Yeah. What do y'all say? We love to decorate for Halloween. Yeah. Who said that? Come back to us. Cindy. Mama's got Halloween. She's got convertible decorations. She's got pumpkins with jack liner faces that she puts out of Halloween and then after Halloween she just turns them around keeps them till Thanksgiving some of them you can turn some of them you can't um she'll take like a file decoration and throw a Halloween -y fun thing on it and then she pulls that back out and she keeps that up so you do the conversions don't you mom yeah Make them last right on through first last of September, right on up to. We used to always have our better circumstance party the weekend before Halloween, whenever that was. Sometimes it's the day before or two days before, but it was always the weekend before. And um, I mean, when COVID started, we quit having it. But our better circumstance party was when someone in your family passes away or gets really ill and every, all the family comes in. And they come in no matter what. No excuses. No, well, I've got other plans. I won't be able to be there. I'll catch y'all next year. No, they just come. They drop everything and they come. Because there's a need and there's a family, you know. And then they get here or there or wherever we go and people say they enjoy each other's company. And they enjoy getting to talk with them when they're catching up. And they'll say when they get ready to leave... I really enjoy getting to catch up with everyone. I just wish it was under better circumstances. So we started having, about 10 years ago, a 
mom's brothers were alive. Um, all of her brothers and sisters were alive. And I'm glad we did it because there's some beautiful pictures. But we started having a better circumstance party. And just the title made people say, what? What are you having? And we said, we're receiving friends at the house at 7 o'clock. Be there. No excuses. Be there. Just like it was a funeral or something else that was tragic. And we always say we'd rather be there in better circumstances. So it caught on. The first year we had it, there were 75 people here. That's a lot of folks. But we had a garage full of people. We had people. It was just tremendous. Wonderful. And then the next year we had about that many. Didn't we, Mama? And so it just kind of, and it grew from there. And it... It was wonderful. Then when COVID hit, we had to say, you know, we just can't do it this year. And we've really not got back into doing it, but we would love to. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if we're going to make it this year. Probably since not. COVID's back around. But uh, we would like to have something like that. But we are wanting to maybe look at maybe a family reunion outside or something. Don't forsake getting that family together. Because sometimes there's an empty chair. Sad enough. And um, so... Let's uh, be looking for that, and hopefully things will, you know, settle out, and we can do that again, because we sure do enjoy it. Mama loves a party. And back to heart party, I mean a family get-together, almost like a, like a church get-together. Plenty of food. A lot of times we have some live music, and it's usually uh, Southern Gospel. <laughs> Or it's, it's, I'm not talking about, when I say party, I don't mean anything other than what we do. And it's just like back kind of fun, everybody getting together. And talk, talk, talk. Talk and eat. <laughs> talk and eat. So, uh, our Better Circumstance Party, that's what it is. You'll hear us refer to it every once in a while. Um, looking forward to doing it again. Yeah. And it's not just family, it's family, friends, neighbors. Anybody wants to come. Anybody. It just opens up. Anyhow, that's all. So what are y'all up to here? Uh, pray God. You know, with these glasses, I can see the break in the lines and stuff. Now, like there were at this distance. Oh, wow. I just can't read it. I can't see the letters or nothing, but I can. It's not just a straight line to me no more. Someone's <laughs> requesting prayer, but I've got to see who. But when we do, we'll be praying for you. Praying for all the prayer requests that are on. Hi, y'all. Hi, Donna. Uh, we also had family reunions. So everyone would have been invited. Yeah, PJ, those were good ones. And you get to see the cousins. You know, this era, I don't know about your all's family, so we're pretty close. Um, Mama's generation, my generation, are very close. But... The next generation in our family, some of them don't know each other. Yeah, that's the truth. How? I don't know how we escape that. But, um, you know, like you'll say, you know, so, no, no. You know that so and so's kid. I don't, I barely know who you're talking about, but yeah, I know. They're, they've not gotten together enough. Uh, we were at my mom and all the time. Every weekend, every, me and my, for one of my first cousins was there every day. Some of the others lived far off, but they were here most every weekend. And I have tons and tons of childhood memories at my mama and papa's, and a lot of them was on the porch. I have a, I love porch setting. It's southern, but I think it goes deeper with that with us because we've done it so much in the family, and my mom and papa and granny, my granny and papa, the porch was the center of the house. The kitchen was, but the porch, anytime the weather, and we would sit on the porch even when it was cold. Um, and just many memories sitting out late and catching um, oh. fireflies, lightning bugs, whatever. Doing all those things as a kid. We had a toad, a frog, a toad frog that lived on my granny's porch. And in my little mind as a child, it was the same toad for years. And years. <laughs> but I would look for him every year and he'd show up. For years. For 
12 years. So maybe it was a different one every year. No. But to me, it was towed every year. And my granny would say, and I wouldn't put it past her to go out and find one and set it up there. <laughs> Have you seen Toad yet? Have you seen Toad? And I said, no. So we'll go look for Toad, see if you can find him. And I'd find him. Uh, I was coming out of church the other night, and uh, something rustled. It was, there's a little bank where we walk, and something rustled in the grass. Well, of course, it startled me, and I stopped and looked. It was still daylight, but it was dusky, and I thought, is that a snake? A little toad jumped <laughs> up on the rock there, and I thought, oh, toad! And it reminded me of my little friend Toad from when I was a kid, and I think it's the same one. I really do. Oh, wow. Different. You're really pushing it now. Thank you. <laughs> it was him, Mama. I knew. He had that same look. He was meeting you, wasn't he? And uh, I thought, there's Toad. We have a Toad on our front porch. Right now, we've got one. And he sings every night loudly. Yes. Maggie, don't care for him. Maggie has been rude to him. She has said things to him that I know hurt his feelings. And sometimes he, he just... He scares me sometimes. He sometimes he just walks off when she starts to sing. He'll just go. And I said, Maggie, that was rude. You've hurt his feelings. Maggie, don't care. Don't care. Same with the crows. Crows and toads, Maggie wants to know part of. She, she's harsh. But he gets right next to the door. Still he the is a peculiar toad. He, and he, still the whole porch, he sits. When he comes at night, most of the time, he's about a six inches from the door. Exactly. Same spot every night. And you can go out for the last Maggie run, and you can look, and there he is. And I always open the door and say, good evening, Toad. <laughs> oh, the crazy things we do here. Mom opens the door and says, there's that Toad again. That's right. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. He reminds me of my childhood. I think it's the same one. I think he and I have aged well together. That's really hell. Do you know it's not the same one, Mama? No, I couldn't swear okay. I did it. Okay. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. I don't know his features to know what I do, and he looks exactly the same as he did as when I was a child. It does. Just like that one at church looked exactly. <laughs> Maybe it's distant relatives. I think it's a cousin. Let me tell you one funny story, and I'll let you go, I promise. <laughs> We used to have a dog named Rusty. And his name was Rusty for a very important reason. Because he was rust colored. And that's how my daddy named him. Rusty, blacky, brownie, whitey. Real Are you hard. seeing the spot? Are you seeing the rhythm? <laughs> so Rusty was our dog. Our little bench-legged, feist, little old feller. Loved Rusty. And he went to church every time we did. Rusty was at church. I and even went sometimes when we sometimes. didn't go. <laughs> the kids at church, I don't know, was Rusty the church dog. Rusty was there. Time we'd get there, Rusty would be there. He'd go through the fields. And our church was not far from us, so it was easy for him to get there. And he would lay there till we left, and he'd come home. He'd be at home when we got home. All the kids at church loved Rusty. They'd bring him treats. He loved to go to church. He was a really dedicated church dog. They would pull his ears, his lips. He just lay there and let them. He loved them. Well, one night, this is a true story. It's something right after Charlie Brown, I promise. Another little dog, different color, a whitish, but looked a lot like Rusty, comes running up the road in the driveway and come up to Rusty and they exchanged a few words, whatever, talking, laying there. And one of the kids said, look, Rusty's brothers come to church to see him. <laughs> and I thought, huh. How sweet. How sweet. That is a cute little dog. I wonder if he's homeless. We'll take him home with Rusty. <laughs> they visited for a little while, kind of like Spike and Snoopy. Rusty's brother ran down the church driveway, turned around and looked at us. Well, 
dad was still alive then and he was out there on the sidewalk and he said where did that dog come from and I said it came from he said that's Rusty's brother <laughs> I said for real and he said yeah yeah he was one of the one of the litter that belongs and dad knew who belonged to it and everything he really did have a brother that came to church to visit and those kids knew it <laughs> Rusty the church dog. He was a good one. I like none as good as Rusty was. Yeah. Rusty was the sweetest dog ever. You'd see him pulling his ears and you'd think, oh Lord, don't bite him, don't bite him. Rusty was the indoor-outdoor dog. He would not stay in. He hated it. But if the temperatures got low, he'd come in. He'd sit by the fire. Morning, he's out of here. Um, he would sit, he'd come into the garage some, but he was a free spirit. Uh, I tried to get him to come in on stormy nights. Nah, he had stuff to do. Uh, Rusty wasn't just going to, you know, he, he had a plan. But uh, he was the best I wasn't in normal. Oh, yeah. He was nicer than Maggie. Maggie's a little hateful sometimes. <laughs> Rusty was so sweet. Okay, that's it. I'm going to really let you go today. Thank y'all for being here. We love Thank you. Thank you for listening to all this going on. <laughs> we love for y'all to visit. We love for you to come over. Like us, follow us, and share us. Share us with your friends. Bring them with you next time. We always fix plenty, and we're always glad to have you sitting here at our counter with us, and it means so much. So, uh, thank you all so much. Bye. Say goodbye, Mama. Bye, Mama. God bless you. So have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.